it's freaking cold. You got frostbite yet? In the frigid Canadian north, young pilots seeking adventure. That's why all those guys are up here. Battle the elements in World War II planes. Son of a bitch. On this episode, trouble at the top of the world. What's so bad? This is stupid. Rampy gets a golden opportunity. It feels right to sit in this chair. But only if his replacement sticks around. I'm not intending to screw the guy over. Out of your hats, boy. Buffalo Airways is going to the brink of the North Pole. This is like the harshest place in the world to go to work. At the harshest time of year, right? So. They're flying a 50-year-old Lockheed Electra into 24-hour darkness and temperatures that could dip below minus 60. The mission is a fuel haul to Canadian Forces Station Alert, the most northerly inhabited place in the world, further north than Buffalo's ever flown before. Take me to the top of the world, Sean Barry. Engineer Adam Smith is eager for the journey to begin. I don't like being in the hangar. Once you get out, don't have to listen to all the managerial bullshit around here. But on this half million dollar contract, management is going along. I'm in control of everything. I'm going to make sure this runs smooth. We're actually going to get out of here a little quicker than we thought. That's a miracle. Buffalo Joe knows that Dwayne needs some northern exposure. He comes from eastern Canada where things have done a lot different. This is western northern Canada. So of course, it's quite a learning curve. Rotation. Dwayne set up this job with the military. If anything goes wrong, he'll be the one taking the heat. When Joe puts me out the road, Buffalo is, is Dwayne Hicks. That's what I'm there, I'm representing. Ground Buffalo 1-1, 1-4 already protection. Everybody's ready. Ready. Where's the boogie? Captain Ray Weber and his crew are flying the Electra to remote Resolute Bay on the Arctic Ocean. They'll pick up fuel and haul it to the top of Ellesmere Island to Canadian Forces Station Alert, just 800 kilometers from the North Pole. That's wild. Heading to the high Arctic is a first for Dwayne. That's where you're allowed to see the polar bears along the edge of the... Is that where they hunt the seals and stuff right along the edge? 23 miles to south, southwest, west of the bay. Uh, four minutes, 30 buffalo, one, one, one. Burning Hill is the airport. Uh, it's to the left. Can you see it? I can see the hill there, and I don't really see the... The Resolute Airport is a 6,500-foot gravel strip that's tough to spot amid the snow-covered terrain. You see the settlement there? Yeah. And just like straight ahead is the airport now. Yeah. It's February. Six months from now, this approach will be the site of an aviation tragedy, the devastating crash of a First Air 737. The accident will leave 12 dead and Northerners reeling. 
200. Landing. 50. 40. 30. 20. Resolute Bay is coming out of three months of 24-hour darkness. There's only a few hours of daylight at this time of year, and the average temperature is 30 below. Buffalo will load diesel fuel here and shuttle it a thousand kilometers further north to alert throughout the week. For Adam, going to alert will be a new experience. It's up there, it's way up there. That's the top of the world. The only place in the Arctic I haven't been. Go plug it in. Adam's been in the north his whole life, but not Dwayne. Yeah, first time in the Arctic, yes. Yeah, very first time. Uh, Yellow knife was one thing, but this is... No, mm -hmm. look at him going silly, Kabunak. Yeah, whatever the f that means, it doesn't matter what it means. Very stupid white man. <laughs> My first impression of Dwayne, useless. He wandered around with a piece of paper in his hand, running and raving, telling everybody he could fire anybody he wanted to. But now, Dwayne's pitching in. When there's something to do, you go ahead and you get it done. I'm the type of guy, you throw two hands in, away you go. Go around there. Right around there, right? Good to see an office pitch like Dwayne out here actually working. Not, oh yeah, you guys can just go do that. Now he actually sees what's involved with going and doing that. Good for him. That power extension cord unplugged. Yeah, just push your head. There, push your head. There you go. You f***ing he-man by the time we're done. Wow, he's just pushing paper around, and now he's actually yeah. having to do something for a living? Yeah. <laughs> I've done my time, buddy. You're 26 year olds. you're still wet behind the f***ing ears, boy. Yeah, but I've been in the Arctic all my life. It's all right. Well, As in the real world all my life. Well, welcome to my real world, bitch. Seventeen hundred kilometers south in Hay River, Tyler Sipos is struggling with his own airplane. Your cylinders are leaking. Yeah. Yeah. Tyler is a rampy, the grunt work job where young licensed pilots get their foot in the door at Buffalo. Gonna have to put oil in it, top it up. It'll be clear sailing from there. He bought himself a Cessna 150, which is one of the smallest airplanes that you can buy. Um, but he bought it, and he's flying around on his time off. That's very rare that a ramp he does that. The first time I flew my plane, just that initial throttling up, you know, like in your own aircraft and just lifting off the ground, you're like, you know, that's, that's cool. I love the sensation of flying, the sense of freedom going places. I love being in motion. Tyler's been working the Hay River ramp since last summer. I was told by the guy who sent me up here, you know, expect to work 12, 14 hour days every day, seven days a week. It takes a certain frame of mind to enjoy the work, you know. Um, some people will see it as pretty negative, but I enjoy hard work. I'm in the industry now. That's the thing. Flying will come, and uh, a little hard work along the way never hurt nobody, so. I'm so excited about my Christmas tree I'm gonna make today. Kathy McBrien supervises the Rampies. Not that we don't ask too much of you ever. ever. You don't ask enough of us, Kathy. No, there's still more soul we can grip out, eh? Even at the end of a long day, okay. Tyler and his Rampy sidekick, Jules okay. D'Souza, nope. hit their version <laughs> of the does. gym using engine parts as weights. Six. Jules showed up a few months ago. They've been buddies ever since. <laughs> Two young pilots from Ontario, a long way from home. Oh, the mornings. What time did you go to bed last night, huh? It's like, About yeah. around uh, 1230 or so. <laughs> and for Jules, working at Buffalo is a far cry from his Toronto Public Library job. I worked in the public library system for 11 years. It was easier than working the ramp, let's put it that way.
Tyler's a cool guy. Yeah, I enjoy hanging around with him. He's a, he's a fun guy. You know, we, we like the same things, you know. He's the one who, who's taught me pretty much everything. You want to give me a little uh, boost on that side? Uh, yeah, sure. You know, he's a little bit shorter. Really, even getting up on the wing, it's, it's hilarious watching him try and get up. Gross. Okay. <laughs> you just grabbed my ass. <laughs> you just grabbed Saved my ass. your life. All right, come on. Yo, I think I rather would have fallen, man. <laughs> That's right. Tweedledee and Tweedledum right there. Right now, Tyler and Jules are slogging it out on the Hay River ramp, but have a laser focus on one goal. We're not here to be rampies. We're here to be pilots. And being here with all these, you know, this dream in front of you, these planes being dangled in front of you, you just want to get there. It's Tyler's day off, but he's back on the ramp. A 66-year-old DC-4 is being prepped for a flight. Her history was, you know, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy, and now she's resting well at Buffalo Airways. The DC-4 is rarely flown in the eight years since Joe bought it. But today, it's being moved to Buffalo's hangar in Red Deer, Alberta. Here it comes, Ty. Tyler couldn't stay away. The DC-4, it has a, a sense of elegance to it. One of my favorite planes here. Chief pilot Justin Simley will be the captain on the flight to Red Deer, and he needs a co-pilot. He was out there working on the airplane, getting it ready to go. You know, he had half that day off and half a Sunday off. I mean, he, you know, he, he wanted to be there. He wanted to do it. Later that day, Justin would come up to me. Tyler. Yeah. And I thought he was going to, like, need my help with something. Gonna bring the airplane down to Red Deer for me. Nice. Oh, man. He's like, tomorrow you're my co-pilot. Just about the uh, fuel of the DC-4, and let me tell you, I certainly have been more happy to fill up a plane. <laughs> so tomorrow, Tyler will get a taste of what every Rampy dreams of, piloting one of these big war planes. Feels right to sit in this chair. And he'll be sitting beside the chief pilot. This is my chance. I'm not going to mess it up. Tell you how I feel in the morning. But right now, it's cloud nine, literally. But no one has ever seen Tyler fly anything but his little single-engine Cessna. And this four-engine, 50,000-pound DC-4 is no Cessna. In frigid Resolute Bay, Buffalo Airways is getting set for the first trip of a dangerous mission to the edge of the North Pole. We're going to the top of the world. Canadian Forces Base alert. Okay. They're hauling tanks filled with 20,000 liters of highly combustible diesel fuel in a 50-year-old Electra. Well, the first thing we got to do is get the heat on the engines. Then we get the hydraulics and the avionics heated up. This is pretty much what we're going to do every day. Just to operate an airplane on Resolute Bay. Miserable. And with a wind chill of minus 65, minus 68. The door needs a little help. It's a little cold. There's no way of actually describing how cold that was. Good, Rick. We have power. Okay, everybody's ready. We're gonna go to work. Let's go to the top of the world, boys. As they head north, the sun makes its brief appearance for the day, coming up over Greenland to the east. The Electra's destination, a thousand kilometers north at Canadian Forces Station Alert, won't see the sun for another month. 
These hills aren't getting higher, they are getting closer here. Yeah, that ridge right there is probably be the one that's that Hercules on it. Just outside of Alert lies a tragic landmark. In 1991, a military Hercules aircraft crashed on approach to Alert. The aircraft exploded on impact and five people were killed. The Herc was hauling fuel, exactly what the Electra is doing. On the ground, they begin offloading the diesel fuel from the Electra's bulk tanks. The waiting soldiers are there to ensure that the crew doesn't venture more than 10 feet from the aircraft. Hey, look at this. There's a whole lot of nothing. Look at that. You go out that way, and it's ice. You go out that way, and it's ice. You go out that way, it's Greenland. You go out that way, well, you're not allowed to film that way. What the Canadian Air Force does here now is confidential. Back in the Cold War years, the station played a key role in monitoring Soviet military communications. Our people fear, the people of the United States fear, a surprise attack across the polar regions. The Soviets had submarines and naval bases in the high Arctic that gave Moscow first strike capability against North America. Alert was situated near enough to pick up radio transmissions from Russian submarines, ships, and long-range aircraft. Today, Alert only has five permanent residents, but dozens of military personnel are stationed here at any given time. Well, they seem to have uh, quite the contingency of people up here, which is uh, actually kind of amazing. But it's all top secret, so I don't know anything about it. Offloading the fuel has gone without a hitch. But this is just the first of many fuel hauls between two of the most remote places in the world, with no airstrips in between. Rampy Tyler Sipos has never flown anything much bigger than a Cessna in his short career. Now, he's about to get a chance to fly a big, four-engine DC-4 beside chief pilot Justin Simley. But this particular DC-4, built in 1945, has seen better days. It doesn't even have a cockpit heater. But Tyler doesn't care. I think I'm about to be in my pants if I decided. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first time I got in that airplane. Lots of shit, lots of dials and stuff, you know, lots going on. There's a lot of work that you still have to do. There's a lot of concentration and focus. training from, from college. It was deathly cold. There was no heater. I couldn't feel my fingers. My feet were frozen solid. I couldn't feel the rudder pedals. Thanks, Justin. Just getting in those old World War II buffalo planes that give you the taste and you get bit by the bug. Meanwhile, back in Hay River, Tyler's rampy partner, Jules D'Souza, is on a courier run. 
and pondering his future at Buffalo. The work is tough. I mean, we wake earlier usually than the, the guys in Yellowknife. I'm, I'm shorter, so I've, I've got to I've got to lift higher. I've got to travel faster. I've got to work harder than any of them. And it's all about can you rough it? Can you can you handle it? How long can you keep going? Right? He's out of his element as far as temperature and part of the country, but he's a very dedicated worker. But after a couple of months in the north, Jules is realizing that it could be a while before he gets out of a courier van and into a cockpit. It, it could vary from eight months to nine months to year and a half, whatever it is. But uh, you try to push that out of your head, but it, it's always there. But let's see. Let's see how long I could uh, keep going. Compared to Tyler, there's a long road ahead for Jules, if he's able to tough it out. Yeah, different life. In Resolute Bay, the Electra is taking on a load of fuel for another delivery to alert. You keep them freaking rolling. Everybody feels better when you can do two in one day. But things aren't going fast enough for Dwayne. You better just do two trips a day, that's all I say. Yeah. <laughs> Adam laughs at Dwayne's southern impatience, but in the cockpit, he hits a snag of his own. The flight computer for the uh, co-pilot side uh, wouldn't work because it had no power. Adam discovers the cause of the problem is a faulty $10 circuit breaker, and he doesn't have a spare. Let me go see if I can find one. I knew I had time for that other coffee. Good hours. Up here in the far north, where the nearest town is over a 1,000 kilometers away, a minor problem can quickly become a major disaster. If Adam can't find the part he needs, this half-million-dollar contract could go up in smoke over a 10-buck fuse. Here we go see the Bork guys and the first air guys and see if they have a 5 amp circuit breaker. There's not one in there you're not using? No, there's not one in there. Breakers. Wow, we got to get this thing airborne, so. Yeah. Dwayne tries another hanger. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have a part number offhand, eh? Hey? No, just a normal old circuit breaker. Gear switch, pressure switch, heated fuel vent here. Right there. Where? Right beside you. Oh, Jesus. Beside Check this out. What do we got here? <gasps> right here. Got it? Yep. Thank you, sir. Not a problem. Appreciate it. We got another circuit breaker and uh, put it in, and we got it all working again. But even with the new circuit breaker in place, Adam isn't quite ready to let the plane take off. Oh, I'm just cutting tire pressures. Minor fix. Just keeping everything tweaked up. Air like, like to leak out when it's cold. And Adam's vigilance is scoring points with the boss. I was, uh, I was very impressed. You know, <laughs> 60 below isn't fun. Adam's been pumping up the tire twice a day, but the pilots are now insisting that he change it. I'm not happy. This is stupid. It wasn't really a, a bad issue. It wasn't anything. It was just seeing the flight crew wasn't comfortable with it. Who wants to change a tire at minus 65 in the wind? What would be a simple job in the hangar can quickly turn into a nightmare on a freezing Arctic tarmac. All right, let's just get the tire up. It needed to be done, but it didn't have to be done at that instant. Need a pump for a minute. Oh, good. You got her. Oh. How you doing, boy? Getting there, son. It's so cold, the grease won't even let the wheel release from the axle. We had to get the grease warm enough so we could pull the tire off. You want to switch out? Yeah, please. But the heat is having an unintended effect. Jack is bending. It's melting the snow under the jack. Give her that This is a bad idea. 
and ice immediately forms around the now buried base of the jack, making it impossible to release. We gotta put it down first. Yeah. Oh, no way. This is stupid. I'll start chipping ice. I got it. I got it. Right on. With a heavy plate placed under the jack, Adam and Dwayne try again. Mechanic got her done. That's how we do that. Boom, but they still have many days of hauling fuel to alert before they can declare this mission a success. In Hay River, up and coming Rampy Tyler Sipos has been working hard toward one goal flying for Buffalo. He got a taste of it in a DC-4 with the chief pilot. It's not me or Joe or Mikey that picks these people. These, these people make themselves. Eh? You don't know, like there's no free rides around here. Hey, um, with everything getting kind of crazy right now, we're gonna need you to actually come up to Yellowknife to start uh, training on uh, the DC-3. Really? We're down for pilots right now, so yeah. Okay, awesome. That's uh, that's great news, Mikey. I'm skipping flight attendant, skipping all the other stuff that's in between, and just going to what I am here to do, which is fly, so. For a pilot to skip uh, flight attending is, is very rare. It put a lot of pressure on Tyler to, to perform. Oh, I'm freaking oil all over the place. The next step for Tyler will be DC-3 ground school in Yellowknife. Hasn't lost any oil. Sucks. I like that. <laughs> he found out a day in advance, so... I mean, it was news to, to all of us. All right, clip drop. Tyler gets his Cessna running and heads to Buffalo HQ. As his career takes off, Jules remains grounded. He knows that it could be more than a year before he gets the kind of break Tyler is getting. The next morning, Jules works the ramp by himself in the bitter cold. Well, I'm not cold, I'm actually really hot, but I can't see anything. Well, they're not fogged, they're iced. Left in Hay River, Jules has got the, the hardest task, which is going to be managing the Hay River base for the winter months, which are, of course, the hardest months. Minus 41 is what it hit this morning. That's when the job gets pretty hard. If Jules doesn't get his chance to fly soon, he might quit. Thinking about the exact time as when you expect to be doing it, that's that's the problem. That's what'll what'll maybe uh cause you to lose some motivation or something of that sort. And if Jules quits, Tyler could find himself right back on the Hay River ramp. <music> Buffalo's electric fuel haul to the top of the world is nearly done. It was uh, pretty miserable. It's the only way to describe it is miserable. <laughs> You don't need a slurpee too fast, you get brain freeze. Well, you can get that just standing there. Come on, get to go. After a few hiccups, things are now going right for manager Dwayne Hicks on this half million dollar contract. It's been a real eye opener for Dwayne, 
In the Arctic, every task is harder and takes much longer than usual. Your three hour routine every morning and you gotta stick with that aircraft. So, you know, we weren't just getting out of bed having breakfast and away you go. You know, he's a southern boy. You don't really uh, understand how things work up here. But the southern boy wants to learn more about the far north. So he stays behind as the Electra heads off with another load of fuel. We've got a couple hours, might as well see what the village folk are doing, visit with them. Here's the town, there she is, Resolute Bay. Resolute Bay, it was once just an outpost for expeditions to the North Pole. Now, it's a settlement of 230 permanent residents. Oh, look, a stop sign. Must be the only stop sign of Resolute Bay. How are you today? Oh, you're going to the post office. Japan. Oh, are you? What are you doing here from Japan, though? I've had an expedition for one month. For one month? Oh, on the sea ice. Jesus, you got a death wish? I don't drink. Hold up. Is that right? <laughs> well, good luck. It's nice meeting you. Yes, I thank you. Thank yeah, you. take care, right? Eh? Can you believe that guy? He's got a dog sled team and he's going to go to Cambridge Bay. It's going to take him a month to get there. That's freaking crazy. Check this out. That's his dog team right there. The f***ing igloo, boys. Look. <laughs> oh, my God. It's all put together, just like brick in a hole. How many people in the world can say they've sat in an igloo, a real igloo? Not too god darn many. Oh, I'm going to move my family up here now. I'm going to give them an igloo. And there's the ocean right there. It just blows my mind to look at that ocean. What a f***ing scan for polar bears. Don't want to be lunch. This is the Canadian Arctic. Amazing. In Yellowknife, Rampy Tyler Sipos is riding the fast track. They're trading me on the DC-3. In the ground school. Valve. Tyler joins a refresher course for all Buffalo DC-3 pilots that's led by Captain Gord Cooling. So this is a hydraulic engine-driven pump. It's pretty simple. It goes in. It's engine-driven on the back here. You can see it inside. It turns two gears. I uh, waited a long time for this and uh, finally get in the classroom and start learning about the plane you're about to fly. It, uh, it's pretty uplifting. It makes all the hard work worth it. Meanwhile, back in Hay River, Tyler's buddy Jules had an accident working the ramp on his own. He fell off the, off the wing of the plane, and I don't really know all the details. I haven't talked to him yet about it. But uh, I guess he pulled his groin and sprained his wrist and stuff like that. And, you know, bruised his ego and all that kind of stuff. You're cleaning up the wing? or Yeah, yeah, just de-icing it. Don't well, no bone was affected. So it's normal. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a split for you anyway. Yeah. And you can take mind? it off and on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Perfect. Thank you very much, okay. Doc. A sprained wrist. But that doesn't exempt Jules from rampy duty. Back in action. Ready for more. Ready to fall off in the neck. Another wing. Working the ramp solo isn't easy. Doing it with only one good arm is almost impossible. Yeah, I did have to pull my own weight with the. Uh, with a minor injury and then pulled the weight off, off Tyler and myself while, while he was uh, gone for some time. And that was a little bit tough. Last night I got frostbite on my ears from wearing this too. It doesn't cover my ears completely. When it's him and I down there, you know, we're both working at our fullest and things get done quick and we take the load off of each other. It's wearing on him pretty hard. And uh, you know, Hay River's not an easy place, you know, no matter what the Yellowknife guys say. It does uh, toughen you up, but uh, you still ask yourself, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> That's a tough line. Discouraged about his prospects at Buffalo, Jules starts looking for a way out. Hi there, I'm listening to Jamie. Hi Jamie, this is Jules calling from Yellowknife.
In the high Arctic, conditions are looking good. Now, this morning is the nicest morning we've had. It's minus 33, and there's only eight knots of wind. Perfect for the flight home. We're all done, we get to go home. No more early mornings, Keep the airplane up. Okay, up one. The grueling fuel haul contract is complete, and the frostbitten crew is heading for the relative warmth of Yellowknife. We're gonna do three. Three looks clear to me. We did a hell of a job, we did a bang up job. Very professional, we look good, we are good. Many days of hard labor in the freezing cold have given Adam a new appreciation for Dwayne. Well, we've been uh, out working with Dwayne. He's not that bad guy, and he'll actually, you know, pitch in and uh, work when he has to. He's probably lost probably about eight pounds working in that wind and cold. He's doing good. I think we'll make an Arctic warrior out of him yet. We got him up there. He was quite humbled by it. Hopefully, it'll uh, open his eyes and make him slow down a little bit and think about how things have to be done instead of just running off half-cocked all the time. Wow. To see the culture, to see the, the darkness and a little bit of daylight, to see the sun set and rise three different times in one day, to see the sun below the horizon when you're flying, that's just, that's outstanding. After his trip to the top of the world, Dwayne Hicks might be a changed man. Minus 16. It's a warm day today. And an interesting day for Jules. He's received a response to the feelers he put out the other day. I've got a, a job offer in Northern Ontario. I'll probably be flying in, in quite a short period of time, shorter than it would be over here. So I really, I don't know. I really don't know what to do right now. If Jules takes the Ontario job flying small planes, it could derail Tyler's promotion and force him to stay on the Hay River ramp. Oh, I think he won't like it very much that if I, if I end up uh, actually making the decision to leave. Back from his DC-3 training in Yellowknife, Tyler gets the news. I got the, the job offer in Moussini. Oh yeah? Yeah. You better stay. I, well, <laughs> you better stay. <laughs> I don't I'll know. Make I, haven't, you stay. I haven't made a decision. He's at Caltire right now. If Jules takes the job, it's going to push me getting checked out back yet another, I'm estimating about maybe three months. Jules doesn't have much time to make a decision. The company in Ontario needs an answer right away. So, what are you going to say, Joe? Have you made your mind yet? No, not really. If you were in my position, in, in my exact situation, what would you do? I don't know. To be honest, I would stay. Buffalo is a much more respected company. You know, when I'm gone, you're taking over Hay River, and then you you're a hard so? worker to begin with, and you'll take over this place, no problem, especially with summer coming. You're going to have so much more time to do whatever the Summer's heck you want. Summer's going to be great. I know. Summer's going to be awesome. Here, I mean, you have everybody here. You have all your stuff here. You know, you have all the opportunities but and stuff. But you would really make stuck. that call? You would, I would. You would stay, right? Yeah. I mean, you're in Moosonee. You train up there. No girls to look at is from what you've told me. You know, at least you have some opportunities Ooh, here to move around. You have Yellowknife. Yeah. You know, you got... And you know what? Who knows how fast things will move because you may be up in Yellowknife faster than you think. And that's how I explained it to him. Taking me out of the equation which made it extremely hard for him to make his decision because it was, it was, I was honest and truthful, and he knew that that was right. Jules is in a bind. I know I'm not intending to, to screw the guy over in any way or anything. He's, he's really cool, he's, he's a good friend and uh, good colleague as well. So yeah, and he knows I have a tough choice to make. Jules wants to take the job, but he doesn't want to hurt Tyler's chances to become a DC-3 co-pilot. Tyler's fate is in Jules' hands.
In Hay River, Tyler's fingers are crossed. Hoping that his buddy Jules doesn't accept a job offer with an airline in Ontario. If Jules leaves Buffalo, Tyler's promotion from Rampy to DC-3 co-pilot will be off. But he has his own career that he has to think about and he has a decision to make. I've been sitting on it for, for almost a week now and I, I just haven't made the call until, until last night. So, so I guess now is the time. Jules heads to the Hay River office to break the news to Kathy McBrien. So, uh, Kathy, I, uh, I have some, I guess, some bad news or... Uh, bad news? Bad news or good news, I guess, depending on how you... How you Are you leaving it. us? I am. Where are you going? Uh, I am. To a company in Northern Ontario. It's a career decision, which is, which is going to hopefully advance my career um, a little bit sooner. Good afternoon, Buffalo Airways. Yeah, hey Finnegan, how's it going? Good, what's happening? Jules just gave us notice. He did? But Tyler's ready to go. What do you want to do? Do you want, do you want to keep Tyler here with the Tyler's team? moving up to All Life was completely based on people being ready in the river. Tyler all basically loses out. He has to wait. It's been a while since I've quit. It's been a whole month. You bet. Jules just quit in Hay River. That's why I hate pilots. Transient motherfuckers. I don't see you again. All the best. But surprisingly, Joe doesn't have any hard feelings towards duels. We're not going anywhere if things don't work out. You know, worked hard, did a good job. I'm giving up on these on these vintage aircraft, DC-3, DC-4, C-46, Electras. Yeah. Okay, guys, get out of here. I'm tired of you. I want to see any. I'm going to be here in Hay River until they get another new guy down here. Jewel's decision leaves Tyler at a loss. Yeah, all going on. The way you look at it, yeah, he is burning me. It's not that he's burning me personally, but the situation is burning me. And the situation is burning Buffalo. was supposed to be a fast track, didn't quite turn into a fast track. I was like, you know what, uh, what curveball is going to be chucked at me next?